Yeah, thanks a lot. Uh, it's good to be at One to One in Australia. I've been uh, lucky enough to get a few of these and I really like the format, obviously. The main sort of show is out there where you get to uh, meet and have those one-to-one -one meetings and it's uh, nice to be able to just sort of tick them off over half an hour intervals. Um, but for those of you who have not booked in, uh, we'll be around for obviously for the next couple of days. Um, I'll go through the Kairos story, which is pretty much a, a gold focus uh, in Western Australia and predominantly focused up in the Pilbara. Um, we got involved in the Pilbara conglomerate gold rush a few years ago. Um, we were pretty keen to sort of uh, look for gold and uh, lithium in the area, uh, given the success of Altura and Pilbara Minerals. We were right next door to them. But realistically, the, the lithium story for us never really took off because we started on the gold and we've just been following that ever since. So um, we just recently did a capital raise. So we had uh, about 1.85 now in the bank and we've got an SPP open. So if you're shareholders, you uh, got the opportunity to, to top up. Um, we've not been doing a lot of drilling um, really this year at all, um, but we will start drilling in the next couple of weeks. Um, and I'll go through the reasons for that uh, through the talk and why we're going to change now the focus and strategy, which will be sort of something that will kick off now and through into next year. Uh, I'm on the board, Bruno Sinex here. He's uh, pretty much our CFO, keeps everything in check. Also got Neil Hutchinson on the board. Um, Neil's uh, uh, got a, a real solid gold and nickel sulphide experience. He was with the Jubilee team with that discovery. Uh, our, our main shareholder is Eric Sprott. Uh, Eric, if you know him, is a is pretty much a... Uh, one of the gold bulls. Uh, he loves uh, all those sort of gold stories. He's worth about 12 billion or something along those lines, which is pretty crazy. And he's a big shareholder and in involvement in Fosterville, that you know, amazing discovery there and, and where that's going. But he's a big believer in the, the, the Pilbara and the gold story up there. Um, so we've got, pretty much like the previous talk, we've got an area where there has been mining. And that's really fantastic if you want to get something going, because you've got not just uh, feasibility studies and studies, you've actually got mining history. Um, and 125,000 ounces was produced in the 90s uh, at a pretty rubbish Australian gold price. I remember that period. But what we've done in 18 was drill out and push the resource that we picked up, which was 125 or 128,000 ounces up to uh, 643. But since then, we've sort of focused on another part of the um, project. And I'll go through that because that was what was... Uh, got us interested with the Pilbara conglomerates. Um, now, a lot of money washed into that area, and some people did stuff, but we're still there, and one of the reasons is we just keep finding gold. And it's an intriguing story when Quentin Hennick from Novo comes up with an idea and says, look, I've got this model, and I really don't like geological models in, a, in, in too much detail, um, but you go 125 k's and there'll be basalts, and under that you'll find conglomerate." And I'll tell you there's gold there, but I'll tell you what shape it is. Now, I don't know too many that can do things like that. So we didn't have any conglomerate when Eric gave us the money. I said, Eric, I reckon we can find that. I reckon I know what conglomerate looks like. And you could see it out of the helicopter when we first went. And then when we looked, there's gold in it. And if you want to come over to the, the booth, I can show you. And there is watermelon seed shape nuggets. And people laugh about it, but it's amazing, really. I don't know why it's there. I've got no idea. Quentin's idea is pretty novel, but it's pretty real. So I'll go through what we've found there after I go through Mount, um, Mount York. Um, and then we've got Row Hills, which is a gold uh, and nickel sulphide uh, project. So if people are interested in nickel sulphides, come and talk to us. So this is where we are in the Pilbara. Um, it's a great place to do exploration because you've got mining infrastructure. And I think, uh, once again, like the previous talk, if you're going to go mining with these great gold prices, the ability to get something done in an area where you've got roads, you've got port facilities, you've, you've just got everything you need. Um, and we're very lucky in that Pilbara Minerals and Altura have built two brand new mines, you know, within five kilometres of our gold resources. So we've effectively got there's bore fields there, we've got camp that we can use, we've got a haul road, or a massive road all the way into site. Um, the area that we've been focusing on though is where we are at Croydon, and that had no real infrastructure. It's only about an hour off the road, but in the Pilbara, an hour's a long way. 
So we've had to develop that over two years. So I'll go through that and explain a bit of uh, what we've been up to. So Mount York itself, um, we did the resources and we constrained them at 2,000 Aussie. And we did that when it was about 1,600, 1, dollars uh, an ounce Aussie. Um, it's, as I'll explain in the next couple of slides, there's a lot more potential there than just the 600. And, and you'll see that when I, I'll give you a bit of a, a, um, a, a look at the, uh, the pit shells and what was mined. You can see the infrastructure there. When I say we're close by, you can see Pilgrim Minerals just right next door in Altura. Uh, we've got um, effectively three deposits, one in Old Faithful. You've got Iron Stirrup, which we're going to start drilling in the next couple of weeks, uh, which has got some pretty good grade. These are more traditional goldfield styles. So the southern, the, the southern one, Main Hill, Britchie Hill and Gosson Hill, which we now call the Mount York deposit, uh, is just a banded iron formation. Now, it's not high grade, but it's there all the time. It's a really consistent ore body. You can see it was mined in the past. Um, there's water. They're actually using that water as process water. Um, so you can see the pit walls stand up nicely. So that gives you really good geotech. Things like that are fantastic. Uh, so we drilled this and found that it's a really one ore body. And when you look at the red uh, blocks in the block model, really consistent. I mean, that's what you want when you've got 11 million tonnes. About half of that's um, indicated. But the consistency is what's there. But also, if you look at the very light grey outline, which doesn't... Yeah, it does come up on this one, which is good. Um, that's the, the, the answers are within those pit shells, not, not the stuff at the bottom. So... We've got real potential there to add ounces just by adjusting uh, gold prices and things like that. So we've done an extra 5,000 metres of drilling here. We'll start drilling at Iron Stirrup and then we'll do an upgrade or a, a re-resource calc in the, in the new year. This is where we're going to start drilling. Once again, really nice widths and grades at Iron Stirrup. Not a very long ore body, but we've um, been doing some modelling on this and it really look, does look like there's stacks of these things. So what we'd be hoping to do is replicate this. So we'll be doing some drilling on this part of it, which um, down uh, dip and mainly down plunge, but also looking for extensions because this, this area has really got the grade that we need to add to the whole process. So the conglomerate story <clears throat> is about 90 k's away, further over to the west. And when we first went out there, we, we used a helicopter for access reasons. Now the yellow dots on that map, we did 250 stream sets. Now the yellow dots on that map are where there's visible gold. Now this is not sort of chasing up parts per billion, this is where we could actually see gold, an area where there's no work ever been done. So that was last year. We've now followed that up under the Mount Robasso, we found a stack of nuggets, we found a kilo and a half of gold with guys who don't know how to metal detect. So the local Aboriginal guys have probably found three times as much as us, right? So there's a heap of gold out there. We know exactly where it's shedding from. We know it's coming from the conglomerate and we can quantify where, but determining the grade is gonna be hard. So that's sort of another story. What we've found though is all this fine gold is something different. So we've really focused on the Northwest portion. And if you can see there, You've got the, the two areas of Mount Row and along the sort of that eastern edge of the, the one on the, the left there, the Mount Row Basel, is a really big regional structure. We've got an eight kilometre long soil anomaly with amazing grades for this part of the world. This is a big drill target. It is the area where all this fine gold is shedding from. Now this fine gold is not Pilbara conglomerate gold. This thing is not Pilbara conglomerate gold. That is hydrothermal. That has come up that structure. There's arsenic, antimony, bismuth, mercury, very distinctive hydrothermal signatures. If you come and have a look, I'll show you a rock, which is basically a sandstone flooded with gold. It's the only nugget we found out here, but it's not a nugget. It's not like the others. This thing is different. This is a massive drill target. We're finishing the heritage surveys and all the rest of it now. Um, unfortunately, with the Pilbara, this will be something for next year. But in the meantime, we, we can be working on um, drilling out Iron Stirrup and, and, and Mount York. So it gives us the two target areas, but this is a fantastic target for next year. This is the sort of area where the nuggets come from. Completely different. You get these areas of uh, conglomerate. Kilo and a half, kilo of gold just around that. Um, we could mine this and process it 
and uh, just have a crack at it. So if people are interested in something where I can't tell you how much gold's in a rock, but we can bring some equipment and let's have a go, this is it. Right? There's probably a couple of hundred thousand tonnes there. And we'll find out by doing it. I think in the old days, they found gold and they mined gold and they did not have jork. And it didn't worry them. Because grade wins, and not all ore bodies are one and a half grams. Computers have done that, I'm pretty sure. I'm not sure how, but everything seems to be uh, low grade nowadays. Now, just finishing with something from this story is Novo started off focusing on this stuff. And I'll bring in global warming. Uh, we might get Extinction Rebellion if we work hard enough. Uh, but they're not here today. We're not big enough like I, Mark. Um, look, Port Hedland's on the coast, and people have this idea that if you can't get the gold out of the conglomerates, what you should do is look out to sea, which makes sense. People do that. And you can dredge it and get it that way. It's already washed out. Except when the guys started looking at it, the sea four million years ago was pretty much that blue line on the right. 130 metres up. And there's marine terrace gravels all the way along that old coastline. And at Edgina, that's what they're processing. They're getting a lot of gold out of what they're processing. We've got um, our Kangan project, which is pretty much about 40 k's of that old coastline. And it's right on Port Hedland. So it's an interesting sort of story for something more simple. It'll be in the first couple of metres. You'd probably be able to quantify it. But Novo, if you have a look at their market cap, they're about half a billion dollars. And that's their focus. So for us, it's another target area. So just quickly, um, we've got fantastic ground positions up in the Pilbara. We think it is the right place to be. Um, we've had amazing exploration success out at Croydon for low value exploration. And sometimes in markets like this, it's good to generate targets. But when the market moves, you've got to drill them. So we're starting to drill now. And that'll be what our focus will be through this year and next year. Um, 643,000 ounces is a great start. Kangan is a really interesting evolving story that Novo are working on. We've just raised uh, 1.35 and we've got an SPP which will kick in some more cash. And uh, you know the gold price has now been in a pretty sustained, uh, fantastic price. And that's where I think you know gold is really a, a fantastic place to be. Thanks a lot.